figure out how to do things like write a business plan, figure out how to do things like create one, two, and five year uh, business objectives and how you're going to get there and roadmap them out and like profit project. And like, there are things that you can do to grow beyond I'm going to buy leads every week. I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to grind it out. I'm going to keep whatever I can. I'm going to mm -hmm. pay my rent. Then what? And then what? Right. So the then what is like start treating it like a business. We're here, but before we get to today's topic, like, comment, and subscribe. I've noticed you only watch for like four minutes anyway. That's sad. Like, come on. There's a lot more interesting stuff than the first four minutes of it. So like, comment, and subscribe now that you catch the first four minutes of today's episode, which is entitled, Now What? Hmm. Now what? what? Now that you've gotten stable, <laughs> now that you've gotten successful, now what do you do? How's that sound for today's topic, Nick? Sounds good. Not sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero. Uh, zero sugar, Coca-Cola zero sugar. But I have uh, recently discovered that uh, Coca-Cola zero sugar, it's fantastic. Um, I, I, I have been a Diet Coke drinker for low on these past 20 years and uh, Coca-Cola zero sugar, a delightful change of pace. So Interesting. Interesting. So, so, so today we're going to talk about now what? Yeah. You know, what, now, what now? I, I wish somebody would take me aside maybe 18 months into my career and have had this conversation with me. And I think that so much of the discourse and conversation in our business is targeted at the final expense 101 crowd. Yeah. Partly because almost nobody ever makes it past that point. <laughs> Partly. Why talk to only 5% of the people that you're working with, right? Hey, that's all who watch anyway. So why not talk about now after you've gotten your feet on the ground, financially under control, the next steps in the business for today's topic. How's that yeah, sound? I think that sounds great. I, I think it's a really important topic. And um, I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect a lot of people who are watching this are not are not established in a way that um, is forward thinking. They're established in a way that's easy now hmm. and not uh, necessarily good for the future. I like that. Well, I don't like that for them, but no, I like that in the sense that this year, the theme for my agency has been legacy, mm -hmm. like legacy requires vision requires forethought requires more than just like today thought mm -hmm. and so much of our industry is not only built on the fact that most people don't make it so i teach anything but the introductory topics but also one call close like get in the door write the business move on yeah you know it's like the opposite is to think ahead so talking today about what do you do once you've gotten the basics under control i think really would benefit a lot of people yeah, I think so. I, I think so. Um, and and this is something that you and I personally have spent a lot of time talking about. Like, I feel like this is one of the main topics of conversation that when you and I are talking when cameras are not turned on, we talk about this sort of thing a lot. Um, but I don't, you're right. I don't hear this like in the general chatter out in the world and on Facebook and Reddit and in any training program that I've ever been to. Um, mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, how you are... If you're going to be running your business like a business, what does that actually mean? Right? You know, um, things like, well, let's go, let's go through a basic checklist, right? Like mm -hmm. at a certain point, whether you have employees or not, just for tax purposes, if you're making over $100,000 a year, you and golly, you should be, right? If you're not making over $100,000 a year, you do not need to do the parts of what we're about to talk about that nope. cost money, but you should probably start planning on doing these things because you should be profiting, profiting, not, not gross, but after you pay for your leads, after you pay for your, your gas in your car, after you pay for all of this other stuff, you should be coming home with about a hundred thousand dollars a year at a minimum. Um, but if you're doing that, you need to have a couple of things in place. Um, you should have a CPA. You should not be doing your taxes yourself. Um, you should have yourself established as an LLC. Um, almost definitely an LLC with an S corp. Although, you know, again, I'm not a CPA. I'm not giving tax advice. But, um, but 
probably an LLC with an S corp. It's a little bit more expensive to file your taxes that way, but the tax advantages are large. Um, you should have retirement plans put in place for yourself. You, you should have a pay. business bank account. <laughs> you should have a business credit card. You should have, um, you, you should have business credit and the ability to acquire a small business loan if you needed to. Not that you're going to want to, but you should have the option available to you in case, you know, disaster strikes, you don't go out of business. Um, these sorts of things. Yeah, well, let's let's start there and kind of unpack and reverse a little bit. A business loan requires you to be a business. Sure and does. what percentage of the selling audience, not just our audience, the three people and a cat watching this, um, the general audience actually has an established corporation or business, do you think? I think it's a really small number. Yeah. Definitely less than half. Absolutely less than half. Maybe less than three quarters. Yeah. Speaking uh, from someone who yeah. contracts agents on a semi-regular basis, it's not that many. Like It's not that yeah. many corps I have to talk through the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know with the agents that I'm working with, and a lot of them are a little bit more savvy to this sort of thing because we do talk about it. But even then, like I have agents contract with me who are like, well, I do have a corp set up, but for Medicare, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go through my personal. I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Then like, what's what's even the point? <laughs> like, yeah, like um, and and the corporation, like the corporation, the LLC structure, um, the S corp structure, these things are not in place to protect you unless you have employees, right? The the legal protections provided by an LLC or an S Corp, if you are out selling, um, they don't really exist unless you have an office that people are coming into and then you are a little bit protected against like slip and fall stuff. Um, but if you're the person that sold the policy, right, you're, per you're still personally liable, right? This is why mm -hmm. you have E&O insurance. Uh, you don't, your, your LLC won't protect you from that. But what the LLC will do is it will give you some tax advantages and it will allow you to have somebody else potentially take over your renewal income if you die, which is extremely difficult to do if you don't have an LLC is established. It's not impossible, but it's very difficult and makes uh, whoever you want to be inheriting your renewals have to jump through a whole lot of hoops in a very short period of time. Um, while they're bereaved while you're freshly dead. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's challenging. Like, like you, they, dead. they have to do a whole lot of stuff in about 60 days. Yeah. Um, if you don't have an LLC established. Well, I, I think there's also a couple different ways we can walk through this because we need to define what we consider stable so that somebody knows when to start walking down this path. Uh, I remember about two years ago, I had agent reach out to me with an agent on the phone. Neither of them are in the business now, ironically. Because they said to me, well, um, he's thinking of taking some time out of the field next week to set up his LLC. I'm like, yeah, I think he needs to take some time in the field to actually be in the field because I can't recall the last time he sold something and neither have you. Yeah. So a lot of agents are trying to do this at the wrong time. But yes. to me, I feel like stability in the industry would be things like you don't even sweat it when they charge your card for leads. Not an issue. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. You need them. Not even a, a thought. Stability is you get some chargebacks. Don't even notice them. Don't care. Not the end of the world. Not going to affect your cash flow. Stable is you know your presentation, your carriers, your products, your process. It just happens on autopilot like you're showing up for work. Um, stable to me is you've really mastered like that basic fundamental channel of whatever you're selling. And now it's time to kind of push yourself to the next level without the grass is greener getting in the way. Yeah. Like that kind of level of like art, um, ambiguous stability is what I'm referring to. You're referring to it more specifically, which is why we make good content together. It's like you're grossing a hundred thousand, but it's gross to think most people don't even know that. Right. Yeah. Net, not even gross. Like you really oh, yeah. need to be netting a hundred thousand. Like if your gross is a hundred thousand, eh, maybe. But like if you're netting a hundred thousand, which again, man, it, if you've been doing this for more than eighteen months and you're not netting a hundred thousand dollars a year, Shit's I am broke. sorry, but you are probably better off getting a different job. Um, there, there are easier ways to make 
a hundred thousand dollars a year than this if you're making less than a hundred thousand dollars a year right like you can you can probably work your way up through most banks um you can probably like there are there are lots of uh, the there are lots of jobs that will pay you sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year, and you've got a lot less personal responsibility and burden. And like, like, yeah, it's it's just easier. I think most agents, though, don't make it to this stable conversation to have this conversation because I don't think most agents are making that. I really don't. I think they're making enough money to pay their bills and keep their spouse off their back. They're making enough money to have money in the bank account. But they're more interested in the freedom of not having to be told what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, that they're just making enough to get by, you know? Yeah. Um... Because because no one's yeah. having no, those kind people of... exist. Yeah, for sure. Like, like, that's a lot of people that get into the insurance industry. They just don't want to get told what to do. Yeah. Um... They, it, nobody fires them either because they're self-employed, but really – if they had an actual business and realized they weren't making any money anyway, they'd probably fire themselves when they put the numbers on paper and saw that. Yeah. Yeah. That makes me feel bad. <laughs> like I know it exists. I try it not does. to think about it, it. Does. but it does. It makes me sad. Um, I would like people to, um, golly, there's so many, there's so many good stable jobs that are like real, real low, low stakes. That'll pay you like $60,000 a year. With like you'll yeah you'll have a boss that's kind of on your back but like yeah. like there's a lot of stuff that you can do, um, you do insurance sales to make money, you know you you do insurance sales. It's nice that there's that you can help people. It's nice that like you can actually legitimately make a tangible difference in the world. There's a lot of nice things that come from it also. You know, it is not a purely like greed driven industry the way that some things are. Um, boy, you talk to a lot of people who work in like high finance and that's a scary world. But but at the end of the day, you do this to make money. And really, 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 if you if you've been in this for about two years and you're not taking home, keeping. A hundred thousand dollars a year like that really needs to be the minimum floor if you're an independent agent. I like that. Before we get into the real complicated part, maybe not complicated, but like the now what part, yeah. I see so many people that aren't running their business. They're not employees. They're they're barely running leads. They're barely they're they're kind of treating this as a hobby. Mm -hmm. And when you have this conversation about now what? Now you've been in it 18 months. Now you know how to give a presentation. Now it's time to stop treating it as a hobby. I know from personal experience the more time I invest into the, the paperwork side of the corporation, corporation contracting, getting the corporation license in random states and the state requirements to do it, the more I take the shit seriously. Yeah. Like it becomes a tangible thing that you've got to take care of, protect, build. It's not just you and your name and your NPN running things and bringing people on. Oh, we're going to hire an agent. You're not hiring anybody. Stop saying that. Like... <laughs> The more you make it real, the more real it becomes to you as you reach this now what moment in your career, right? Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and and I would say that, like, if you don't have a background in business, I didn't have a background in business. None. I have no idea. I'd never, I'd never attempted to open up a business before. I don't have any education background in business. I got a, I got a theater degree. Um, you know, I, I. I have been an independent contractor my entire life in some way, shape or form because I got a theater degree and that's what theater, how the world works in theater also. Um, but like, you should take some time to do, get a little bit of education on how running a business works. There are a surprising number of resources towards for small business owners who have never been small business owners before. And if you think of yourself like you are a small business owner, like you are an employee, you are you are you are a business owner who has one employee and that one employee is you. There are a lot of resources. Now you can also hire other employees, but you don't even have to. Never have to get you never have to get that far. Like there are so many resources 
through local chamber of commerces. There's an organization called SCORE. There's um, there's just your local library has books. Like like figure out how to do things like write a business plan. Figure out how to do things like create one, two, and five year uh, business objectives and how you're going to get there and roadmap them out and like profit project and like there are things that you can do to grow beyond I'm going to buy leads every week. I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to grind it out. I'm going to keep whatever I can and I'm going to mm -hmm. pay my rent. And then what? And then what? Right. Yeah. So the then what is like start treating it like a business. That doesn't mean you have to build a downline. Building a downline is not for everybody. Building a downline is not for most people, realistically. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to do that. But you can you can you can grow your business through proper planning. You know, um, insurance agencies exist, lots of them, and have for a long time. As a solo agent, you are potentially an agency, but that doesn't mean you are actually an agency. You actually have to do the things that agencies do to be an mm -hmm. agency. You're just you're just an employee. You're just an independent contractor. Um, if you don't take the steps to take to to step into being a business owner, um, don't lie to yourself that you're a business owner. If you're not, don't let other people tell you you're a business owner. Um, if you're not actually doing business owner things, I, I I'm at the risk of being hypocritical because I got most of this stuff set up. When someone says, come work for my agency and you're contracting under them, the agency is just a, a fugazi concept at that point, right? Yeah. yeah. You're still yeah. contracting under whoever their agency is above them because they're the actual agency at that point. Right. You're just, yeah. Um. See, the tough part, though, is a lot of people that make it to this conversation are so run and gun, buy and work, you know, would, however the chips fall, they fail that week. They don't know how to pause, like take yeah. these strategic moments in their career, stop, take a breath, analyze, talk with someone that makes more money than them and knows what to guide them through next. Like strategic pause moments in their year and their career are very difficult to do. It's so hard. It's so hard. And I get it. I, I really get it. Especially if you're hundred percent commission only, you eat what you kill. It's hard to pump the brakes, which is why you need to be making enough money. You need to be saving money as you are getting to that point. Maybe you're not making $100,000 a year yet. You need to be putting money aside so that, I mean, if you want to grow, like if you want to be, if you want this to be a business that you're running like a business, you need to have cash reserves so that you can, when the time is right and you are ready to take a step in a direction, there are many directions you can take that step, right? There are many ways that you can go with this. You can add additional lines of insurance. You can add additional employees. You can build a downline. You can partner with other agencies. There's a lot of different things you can Equity, do. like equity yeah, plays. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's Investors, so many different, loans. right? Like it, it becomes complicated to say like what your step should be because it, you get to this point and it's like, well, what do you want your step to be? And then it's about how do you get there? But you have to be established enough to be able to, to make those moves. And one of those things is you have to have cash reserves. You must have cash reserves so that you can say, hey, I'm going to, for instance, I am going to take two months out of the field and figure out how to build a soup to nuts um internet lead generation system that I am 100% in charge of where I'm running all my ads across multiple platforms. And it's, and it is bringing me in a, a, a consistent number of new leads to talk to on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take me two months to, to, to get that set up and operated and tested and working because I, know somebody who can teach me how to do that, or I feel confident that I can teach myself how to do that or whatever. This is one of the things you can do, right? And well, then eventually you'll have a very inexpensive lead source that you're in control of forever yeah. and ever and ever. I don't know but if you realize this, but I think it's important to just touch on this for a second. If you're watching now, thank you for being on still to this point, like, comment, and subscribe, because now you're really getting to some stuff that makes a difference in the little things he's saying, like dial into this crap. It's, it's, 
I don't even know if you know it. I, I know that people make quick decisions on small sample size in this business. Like, man, that area sucked. How many days did you work at one? Yeah. What? That lead type blows. How many times did you work it once? Right. What? That carrier is amazing. How many times have you sold it twice? How long has it been on the books? A week. Right. Like people fall so victim to small sample size in your scenario that you were talking about. You talked about two months, affectionately yeah. four to six weeks. Yeah. Like, I, I preach this all the time on toolkit demos to my agents, to myself. Don't have an opinion about something medium picture until six weeks. Oh, Don't wow. have an opinion about something big picture until like six months, right? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Right? Um, and and the big things take time. A lot of you time. Know? The big things take time. Um, you know, if you're going to be like, you're going to be running Facebook ads or you're going to be buying direct mail leads or you're going to be doing any kind of lead generation. Appointment setting. Appointment, appointment setting. setting. It's going to take time for you to figure out how to do these things. Um, and you have to test them to see if they work. Like you could have an idea that you think is an amazing idea. Um, I, uh, I will use an example cause we're talking about lead stuff. So, um, you know, I am, I am in the process of generating some Facebook ads for my, for myself, for, um, for my own, for my own business. Um, and I wrote an ad that I thought was like a fantastic ad. I thought it was a great ad. I showed it to other people who know about ad copy and they all also thought it was a great ad for safety. I wrote three other ads. I thought they were fine. Um, but I had this one that I was really, really like, I was like, this is a, this is going to like, this is going to kill. And ev again, everybody agreed. This was the one that was going to kill. Um, and I ran a test and I ran a test with, with all of these ads. And one of the ones where I was like, eh, this is okay. I guess I'll throw this in there. Almost didn't run it. I was not very enthusiastic about it. It's bringing me like $4 leads. Mm. And the other ones were bringing me like $60 leads, including <laughs> the one that I loved. Oh, man. Right. And so, okay, well, this is why you test things. And the one that I didn't think was great turns out fantastic ad. Keeping that one, killing the rest, <laughs> you know? Um, and that's the kind of stuff that you can do. Um, and you just need to like, you got to have the time and the money to be able to play with it. And you like, and you need to have the time to be able to say, I'm going to dedicate some time to this. Um, mm -hmm. whether, whether it's learning a new skill or hiring a new employee or trying ads or incorporating yourself or setting up payroll or starting a proper accounting system or hiring mm -hmm. an accountant or like none of these things are things that you should be making sm snap judgments on going to a new territory, you know? Um, oh yeah. Be like, very careful. What do you, you think about give time launching or investing full-time efforts into some type of a recruiting system? Um, how same concept there, would you say? Yeah, I mean, if if recruiting is what you want to do, like, and I say this as a person who has people contracted under me now, but I hate recruiting. I I try never to do it. Um, <laughs> but um, but if recruiting is what you want to do, it's going to take time. You're going to have to, even if you have a proven system, even if you have somebody else's proven system that has worked perfectly well for them. It is going to take time for that to translate to fit you. Mm -hmm. And that translation from human to human is never going to be 100%. And there will be a learning curve. And you have to get through the learning curve. And it's going to take probably six to eight weeks. Probably six to eight weeks before you're even comfortable with it. And then realistically, probably another six months before it's settled. I think your timelines that you gave before are like spot on. Yeah. The tough part with recruiting is especially you could have that introductory conversation with someone today, like trying to bring Nick on have yeah. a conversation with him. That's not this. That's not where it really began. Then step two and then contracting and then an agent number and then the mm -hmm. lead then actually selling. It might take time to go from initial conversation to actual production. So even six weeks of a ramp up period could take time you may not even see results from that like the ebb and flow of agency production operates in a far longer time span than people realize 
I expect 12 weeks from the time that I first talk to somebody and they say, yeah, I think I would like to work with you before they're like writing with any kind of consistency. I, ex I expect, I build into all of my models. It's going to take them 12 weeks to be like consistent. You know, like, what's also really crazy works. when it comes to building a business, let's wrap up on this point. People talk about building a downline and building an agency and, and building wide and building deep and all kinds of building words. Yeah. But it takes a lot of humans to actually bef before that becomes noticeable in your income. Yeah. Like I, I brought on my friend and my friend's five points below me. And now he's writing business. He's still not making any money. Like you're really not. Okay. Four bucks an application, $72 that week from your friend. How many humans does it really take? before you're starting to really notice business level income from that building. I mean, let's let's put it this way. So the 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 IMO that I do my final expense contracting through has probably something like 2000 to 2500 contracted agents in there. Not huge, but not small. Um they do a lot of business as an IMO. They are the top IMO for a couple of insurance carriers. They're number two, three, and four for a bunch of others. They, they do they do pretty well. I would say, well, I, I know that of those 2,000 agents, there are about 12 who write $200,000 a year or more in final expense premium. And there are probably 100 who write $50,000 a year and more. And then all the rest of them <laughs> are below that. And so to get to get like 12 really, really, really good, like high level producing agents, it took them 2000 to 2500 contracted agents to get like a hundred just like regular producers, it took them 2,000 to 2,500 contracted agents. Um, and they're good at this, right? Like they produce more agents who write over $200,000 a year. They have, produ they have produced more agents that write over $200,000 a year face-to-face -face final expense sales than any other final expense organization that I am aware of. Um, and it takes a lot of bodies to get to that point. Sure does. So in short, this morning, afternoon, our conversation about now what? Now that you've gotten you know, $100,000 of net income, you know, your presentation, you're not worried about leads or chargebacks, you know how to do what you need to do. Take that strategic pause in your business and decide what's next. Get around people that can influence and suggest and teach and replicate that. Don't just be eight years into the business buying leads and banging doors as if it was the very beginning without taking these strategic pause moments to decide what to do next. I think that's it. I don't know that there's anything else to say. Appreciate you guys being here today. Like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll be at it next week to do it again. See ya.